give it up for Simon Bailey! Come on! Awesome. Oh my God, okay, I'm exhausted. I'm not as in good a shape as I thought I was. Thank God I didn't put the heels on. I thought, okay, it's 4.30, I'm not changing the heels, I'm gonna wear the tennis shoes for y'all. I hope you don't mind, right? Okay, whew, I'm seriously winded. Oh. Um, so, I have a question for you. What's your next chapter? I'm dead serious. What is the next chapter of your life? I don't care how young you are, how old you are. I want to turn the tables back on you. I want you to think about where you've been. I want you to think about why are you here? There is a new chapter starting in your life, in your business, in your relationships, and it's going to start right now. So what is it? You know, I've been thinking about this a lot because um, I'm in the middle of starting a new chapter. I, I, I've been thinking, I don't know how many of you know me or know my story, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, the last chapter of my life, my, my professional life, started about six years ago. So six years ago, I gave this uh, TED talk, this TEDx talk. And, you know, by the way, this was the first time I had ever given a speech. So this is, if you want to see what it looks like for somebody to have a 21-minute long panic attack, this is a great speech to watch. Um, and, you know, what was I talking about? Well, you know, I was asked to come and talk about how I had changed my career so many times, because I had been the kind of person that really could never figure out what the heck I should do with my life. I had gone to law school because I couldn't figure out what to do. I practiced criminal defense for a long time, then I went into corporate litigation, then I went into the dot-com scene, then I got into the entrepreneurial scene, then I got into the coaching scene, then I got into the media business, and I was a syndicated talk show host on the radio for a while, and then I worked for CNN, and I never thought I would be a speaker, never in a million years. So I was giving this talk, and um, it was a talk more about how you change. And at the end, I let a little secret slip. You see, I had discovered something at a terrible time in my life. How many of you know what the five-second rule is? Not the one with the food on the floor, you know, where you drop it. Okay, great. Thank you for raising your hands. If you'll, if you'll just give me a couple minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring everybody else into the party that didn't raise their hand. So in 2008, my husband's restaurant business started going under, and it took our house, uh, our entire life savings, and almost our marriage with it. And thankfully, it didn't take the marriage, but it took all the money. And at the time, I was also unemployed, and, and I was facing uh, an issue where I just felt like shit about myself, excuse the word, but I did. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. The alarm would go off in the morning, and all I could think about are all the things that were wrong with my life. You ever wake up and you feel that sense of dread? You got a job you hate going to? You got a body that you don't like? You just don't feel that good? Well, that was me every single morning, and I was also doing a lot, making a lot of decisions that were pretty bad. I was drinking a lot. I was not that nice to my husband. And I was really, really struggling because I was really scared. See, I was doing a lot of things that caused me pain because I was in a lot of pain. Well, what ended up happening is one night I, I, I was uh, watching a, a commercial and I saw this rocket ship launching and I thought, oh my God, that's the answer. That's it right there. Tomorrow morning when the alarm goes off, because I was hitting the snooze button over and over and over again. Tomorrow morning when that alarm goes off, I am going to rocket out of that bed like a rocket ship. I am going to move so fast that I cannot talk myself out of getting up. Now, it might have been the four Manhattans I had had that night that gave me that dumb idea. <laughs> um, but, you know, whatever. I I'm going to take the inspiration where it comes. So the next morning, the alarm goes off, and I'll never forget this, you guys. It was a Tuesday. It was February. We had lost the kids' college savings. There was a lien on our house. Chris was sleeping on the couch. I was unemployed. I felt like the world's worst parent. I felt like just no confidence, no idea how I was going to dig myself out of this hole. The alarm goes off, and, and it was weird. It was like time suspended. Immediately, 
as I laid there in bed, I started thinking. I started thinking about all the things that were wrong. I started thinking about the dread that I felt. I started thinking about, ah, oh, another terrible day. I just don't have the energy for this. And then I did something I had never done before. I could feel the doubt close in as I was lying there thinking. I went five, four, three, two, one. And I stood up and I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The next morning, the alarm goes off. I didn't feel like getting up, still had all the same problems. I went five, four, three, two, one, I stood up. Now that I'm almost 50, when the alarm goes off at two, or when the, the body alarm goes off and I have to go to the bathroom, I don't lay there and think about it. Five, four, three, two, one, I get up and go. Lying there, it's very hard to go back to sleep, isn't it? So a funny thing happened. As I started to use this stupid rule, okay? As I started to use this rule, I'm gonna count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, if I know I should do something. My whole life started to change. You see, what I'm about to prove to you today is that your entire life is happening in five second windows. That the secret to greater confidence, the secret to beating self-doubt, the secret to building that legacy, to being hungry, like Les was talking about, five second windows, five second decisions. I made myself a promise as I started to beat the habit of hitting the snooze button. I said to myself, look, if I find myself in a situation where I know what I should do, but I don't feel like doing it, I'm going to use this stupid rule. So I would five, four, three, two, one, and get up. And I'd walk into the kitchen, and I'd see Chris, and we still had all these financial problems, and I'd go, want to strangle you, because it's easier to point the finger, isn't it, at other people? Have you ever noticed when you're pointing the finger at other people and blaming and shaming and complaining? There's always three pointing right back at you, isn't there? I think it's the universe or God's way of saying, hey, the power is in you. But when you don't feel confident, you don't feel that the power is in you, do you? You feel full of doubt. So slowly but surely, I started making five-second decisions. I would see the booze, and I knew I shouldn't have it. And I'd go five, four, three, two, one, and I'd turn away. I'd see the phone and knew I needed to make a phone call to get a job, and I'd go five, four, three, two, one, and everything started to change. Now, and full disclosure, I was never going to tell anybody about this, ever, because it sounds so stupid. Oh, you guys want to change your life? No problem, just count to five. <laughs> Done. Okay, mic drop, I'm out. That's it. Here's the other thing. I had no idea why it worked. I honestly thought like I was a witch. I had figured out a spell. I understood like how to create magic in my head. And here's the other thing. This was classified. This was my stuff. Why would I want you to have it? This was working for me. I suddenly went from depressed, drinking, in bed, in debt, fighting with my husband, to getting up, getting in shape, getting sober for a while. <laughs> getting a job, getting a radio show, making that radio show syndicate, making more money than I ever thought was possible. How? One five-second decision at a time. So I never intended to tell anybody, because it was working for me, it was working for Chris, and then I get and I do this talk and I'm having a panic attack and I totally forget where I am and at the very end I'm like, oh, by the way, there's this thing called the five-second rule. <laughs> wow. So 2011 was when that chapter of my life started. I walked off that stage, they put that thing online, and it's almost 11 million views strong at this point. Yes. Now, the five-second rule for those of you that are wondering is this. It's super simple. The moment you begin to hesitate, count five, four, three, two, one. Do not do it out loud. You will scare people. <laughs> You'll sound insane. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, here, I'm ready to go. Don't count up. You can keep going. You're gonna count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, and then you gotta move, and you gotta do this so that your mind doesn't stop you. And in a minute, I'm gonna explain, you, I'm gonna explain some of the science, but I wanna tell you kind of some of the backstory. So, um, you know, a funny thing happened. As that talk started to spread, people from around the world started to write. And we've heard from more than a quarter of a million people in 90 countries. Now, what do you suppose they write about? They write about that stupid five-second rule. But the things that they write about are crazy, profound. So, you know, this gentleman started using it, and he's on pace to double his business in 18 months. More importantly, he's so present with his kids going five, four, three, two, one, and waking up in the moment that he's like dad of the year. 
We see people using the rule in order to find the courage to reach out to people. We see people using it in a selling situation because you know, thinking about making the call won't make the call happen. Thinking about making sales, funny, that doesn't grow your business, does it? Makes you smart, doesn't make you rich. Easy rule to teach to people. You're gonna become addicted to it because it's so stupid and it works. You're gonna be surprised, it works, and it's free, it's unbelievable. We know of people around the world that are also quitting terrible habits. And we're gonna talk a little bit about habits today. We also um, see people that are becoming more productive. We know of at least 21 people that have stopped themselves from committing suicide. Because no matter what, I don't care how amazing your life is or how low it gets, your inner wisdom is always with you, always. And the key to getting what you want, and we're going to talk about the next chapter of your life that starts today, is having the clarity to tune into that wisdom, having the courage to listen to it, and having the confidence to actually take action. Now, if you wanted the license plate, it's gone. And I need to say, do not use this to get a tattoo. And if you decide that you're going to, I am not responsible. Yes, this keeps happening. So that's kind of my story, okay? It started in 2011 and, and it created this incredible speaking career and I wrote this book that, that has gone and exploded in terms of uh, reaching and spreading the idea. And, and take the five second rule, start using it. It's free, it works. Walk out of here and try it. But that brings me back to you because I've kind of had this feeling lately that a new chapter is starting. Do you feel that way? I think so, because I think that's why you're here. There is a new chapter starting, and I had something really weird happen to me the other day. So the new chapter for me is, is all about doing more work where I can connect with people. Doing less work where I'm on a stage and I don't get to talk to people in terms of the exchange. You walk out of here, I may never see you again. I hope not. I hope not. But doing more work, like creating courses and creating more content online so I can stay connected to you. So last week, I, I did this course at Creative Live where I taught my first course seven hours long, live with them. It was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. And I had this sense, I said the night before, I said as we were there rehearsing before we were about to do this course, I feel like this is the beginning of a new chapter. I really do. And I'm one of those kind of weird people that I believe in signs. You see, I think that it's a sign that you're sitting here right now. So that night, I, I, right before the class, I'm kind of freaking out, and I say to my business partner, can you pick somewhere that we can go so we can work? And she says, sure. And I said, just pick a hotel somewhere so we can go get some work done. And so we hop in the car, I have no idea where we're going, and we pull in and I realize, oh my God, holy cow. This is the hotel that I stayed in the night before that TEDx talk. And there is the building where I gave that talk. I had come full circle. Check this out. We are at the St. Regis Hotel in San Francisco and I'm freaking out because when I walked in I realized that in 2011, which is six years ago, I stayed in this hotel and gave the TED Talk that TEDx talk that's gone viral, that launched my career, that helped me spread the five second rule. I gave that TED talk across the street from here. We walked into this hotel randomly and tomorrow I am teaching a course on the science of confidence with Creative Live and this is the beginning of the next phase of my career, being a content creator, having a company that creates courses, and moving into the realm of influencer and out of the realm of corporate speaker. And I feel so freaked out because I look for signs in life. And this is a sign that I've come full circle. I am completing 
this six year chapter of my career and I'm back to the place where it started to launch the next one. Cool, right? Now that was about me, but here's this. What's your next chapter? See, I would do my job if I got you all so in action that you were on stage next year, right? That's right, because your doubts are creating mountains. The reason why I'm here is I'm going to show you how to move them. We're going to cover a couple things here. The title of the talk was Break the Habit of Self-Doubt and Rock Confidence. So what we're going to talk about is confidence. What is it? Because a lot of us don't understand it. I know I didn't understand it. I had not the real confidence. I had the fake kind. You know, the really bossy, annoying kind, where it was really driven by insecurity. What we want to talk about is real confidence. The other thing we're going to talk about is the habit of self-doubt. The habit of self-doubt. So believe it or not, self-doubt is a habit. It's a behavior, a thinking pattern that you repeat over and over, and then it becomes automated. And when I can get you to understand that anxiety, worry, procrastination, self-doubt, they are all habits, then I can show you using science how you can break them. And then everything changes. And it all comes back to these five-second decisions. If you had more confidence, how would your business and life change for the better? I'm going to tell you how mine had when I finally learned what confidence is and what it isn't. Number one, I know how to say no. How many of you have a hard time saying no? You have clients you can't stand. You have people that work for you that drain you. Uh, the ability to align your goals with values and actions. Fearless negotiator. Fearless. Greater self-control. By the way, let me stop there for a second, because I believe that in today's world, this is the number one skill for you. Self-control. And we're going to give you tools today that are going to give it to you. You're going to make a lot more money and you're going to be a happier human being. Absolutely, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We can talk about change all you want, but I'm the kind of person that's about real advice for real people, and that's going to require some real action. So as I'm talking, I want you to notice what are the physical sensations, the feelings that come up in your body. When I ask you, how would your life change if you had more confidence and you have an answer, do you feel yourself shrinking? Do you feel yourself talking yourself out or raising your hand? Because if I can get you to start to isolate that pattern and that habit simply in how you respond to whether or not you're going to answer this question, if I can break that right there so that you learn to try, I almost fell off a minute. Oh, good, there's a thing. You learn to try. Thank you. I'm going to like sur crowd surf right now. You got me? Okay. Then you can bring that anywhere. I'm into experiential learning because, you know, I've got dyslexia, I'm ADD, it's really hard for me to read and retain. So if I feel it, if I have to do it, then it sticks. So let's talk about the myths and the truths about confidence, okay? Number one, confidence is a personality trait. Total baloney. Total baloney. Lots of extroverted people that are really bossy and annoying like I used to be, although I might still be a little annoying, um, but really insecure really insecure. There's a lot of introverted folks that feel uncomfortable putting themselves out there, but they're, they, they really believe in what they're saying. So confidence is not a personality trait. Confidence is fixed. That's not true. You could be the most confident person in the world, and the person that you love leaves you. That's going to rock confidence. You could be a really great business person and then make a really bad decision and blow it all. That's going to rock you. Number three, that confidence starts with belief. This is where I go against so many other people. I actually believe that this is not true. I think that thinking positive thoughts will certainly make you feel better in the moment, but it's not going to create change that you want. That you can be a negative, frustrated, depressed, anxiety-ridden son of a gun and you can still take action. And that taking action is key. You see, here's the truth about confidence. First of all, it's not a skill, it's a trait. And that's good news. I mean, excuse me, it's not a trait. Oh, it's a skill, it's not a trait. See, dyslexia on full display, I was not lying about that. <laughs> confidence is a skill, it's not a trait. 
Confidence is situational. So there are areas of your life where you are confident, and then there are areas of your life where you have a ton of doubt. And here's the most important one. Confidence begins with action. Now, this is not something that I made up, and in a second, I'm going to show you the science. I want you to write this quote down. If you have a problem that can be solved with action, you don't have a problem. So a lot of us talk about the problems that we have, but they're actually not problems. We're stuck in one of the traps of self-doubt. And that's what we're going to be talking about in just a second. But first, I want to show you how you build confidence. And let's, let's look at the research, because there's really, really strong research on this. If you want more information on this, just Google the confidence competency loop. The confidence competency loop. Let me show you what this is. So basically, if you try something, he's either going to succeed or he's going to survive. Now, what happens if you survive it? Like, you really blow it, but you survive it. Well, you learn something. And then when you learn something, what are you doing? You're building skills. And when you're building skills at something, what are you gaining? Competency. All competency means is that by learning something over and over and over again, you have to do less thinking about it, so you don't have time to get anxious, just like me in the bed. I had time to lay there, so I was thinking about all my problems. The more you do something, the more that you try, the more you build skill and competency, and that is where confidence comes. So I want you to walk out of here not only with the five, four, three, two, one. Catch yourself when you feel yourself shrinking. Catch yourself when you feel yourself editing yourself or silencing yourself. I also want you to walk out of here with a brand new definition of confidence, which I'm going to give to you in a second. Because check this out. All of us are going to feel failure. Let me show you what happens when you are afraid of failing, when you're, when you're fearing it. First of all, you're going to start thinking, aren't you? Ooh, I don't know if I want to give a speech. I might be really bad at it. And then I don't know what I want to talk about. And I'm not really sure. Am I ready? Am I not ready? Should I wear the tennis shoes? Should I wear the heels? Should I not do this? Should I do this? And then, of course, as you think, you're going to start to doubt yourself. And this becomes this loop. This is what um, researchers call a habit loop. We're going to get more into this. This is a chunk of behavior that gets encoded in this part of your brain. You see, you don't, you're not a doubter. You have a habit of doing it. The same is true, by the way, when you feel nervous. You start overthinking. The same is true when you start feeling insecure. The same is true when you feel like a fake. The same is true when you start to get overwhelmed. The same is true when you start to fear rejection. All of those things, normal. It's normal to be afraid of being rejected. It sucks. It's normal to feel nervous. These feelings are normal. Acting nervous is a choice. There's only one way to break a habit loop. You have to insert a different behavior. Pretty neat, huh? See, we spend way too much time with the red arrows. I got to be fearless. I can't, never, I can't ever worry. I, I, you know, I, it's terrible to feel like a fake. No, it's not. It's normal. In fact, you're going to. When you first relaunch your eco-adventure company, you're going to feel like a fake. That is normal. Acting like one is a choice. So the only way to break the habit of self-doubt and thinking is to take action. And what action are you going to take? Five, four, three, two, one. And that, if you do it over and over, puts a new habit in place. This is how you build confidence, one five-second decision at a time. Let me show you a little bit more science. So right here is your, your brain. And the red part right there, that's the basal ganglia. That's where all your habit loops get encoded. Everything that you do that you don't think about. Worrying. Let me give you another example. Um, when you put on your pants, do you put your right or your left leg in first? You're thinking about it, aren't you? You don't when you pull your jeans on. It's a pattern of behavior that is right here. Here's the other problem. This is also where worry is. This is where anxiety is. This is where depression is. This is where self-doubt is. It's all right here. This is where procrastination is. What happens when you go five, four, three, two, one, is you activate the prefrontal cortex, which you know is the part of the brain that you need for strategic thinking, for acting with courage, for changing. So the truth is, in five seconds, you can change anything, and that changes everything. 
And I want you to understand that to feel more confident about the things that you want to do in your next chapter, it begins with being willing to try. So if confidence is the decision to try, because I also like the idea of you not thinking that the big topics like confidence are about how you feel. I want to make them action-based. Because you can't control how you feel at times, but you can always choose how you act. So if confidence is the decision to try, here's the definition of self-doubt. It's the decision not to. See, one of the things that I've come to realize is that when you talk about self-doubt, it's such a big term that you tend to think that it's just nothing that you can control. But what if you started to consider that self-doubt is actually a decision? It's going to give you a lot of power. Now remember, I told you that your doubts create mountains and your actions move them. So let me show you the four traps of self-doubt. This is really incredible stuff. So, the four traps of self-doubt, because I just said confidence is about an action, self-doubt is a decision not to try, and there are four ways, four actions that we all engage in that are you deciding not to try. Here they are. Hesitating, hiding, hypercritical, and helplessness. So I'm going to unpack these for you, and I want you to be thinking for a minute. I want you to think about that next chapter. And as I roll these out, I want you to think about, are you stuck in this? And by the way, I, I can relate to every single one of these. So when I think about the next chapter of getting into throwing events and, and creating more and more courses and doing bigger and bigger things, I can see myself in every single one of these, okay? So this is normal stuff, and when you start to break it apart, now you've got the power to change it. So hesitation, what does this look like? First of all, it's triggered by uncertainty. So if you feel uncertain about the changes that you want to make, you're going to fall into this trap. You're going to start hesitating. You're going to find yourself waiting. You're going to start overthinking. You're going to want your work to be perfect. Who is struggling with hesitation right now? OK, come on up here. Kelly Joe, hop up. Can you climb up there? Yeah, get up here. Let's go. Oh, we'll go this way. You visualize, she visualize. We give her the round of applause, please. Is this the mic? Where's the mic? Oh, here's the mic. Round of applause, please. It's like, yes, thank you. Okay. Okay. You're gonna pee your pants. This would be amazing. Because normally it's me doing that on stage. Okay, hi. Um, so what is the next chapter that you want? in your life? Like, what is it that you're working on? Well, I would, it was this right now, to be up here. What do you mean? I wanted, at this conference, to stand on this stage. And then, because uh, I have stage fright. It terrifies the shit out of me right now. I, my voice is quivering. Uh, now, interesting. <laughs> What's happening in your body? Uh, my voice is shaking. What else? Uh, I feel like my chest is going to cave in. What else? I'm really hot. Are you sweating yet? Nope, but my head hurts. No, I don't think Clammy I Clammy hands? Left. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tightness in the throat? Very much. How many of you kind of feel that for her? <laughs> yes, those are your mirror Thank neurons, you. kind of. <laughs> now, you can feel all of that stuff, and you can take action. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So what is it that you really want to do that you're hesitating? Which one? Do you wait? Do you overthink? Which one are you doing? Uncertainty. Yeah. Uncertainty. Overthinking. So what do you want to create? What's the next chapter for you? I want to give a voice to uh, kids that have been sexually abused and let them, let them know that they can talk about it. Wow. <laughs> now, how are you hesitating? How are you stuck in this trap? What are the things that you're doing? Tell on yourself. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't know that was going to be my answer until just now. But uh, <laughs> I... I honestly have no idea right now. Right now I can hardly see him, so excited. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's, That's okay. Okay, so come back to me. So what are the things that you do that stop you from moving forward? I get scared that I'm not going to be able to provide for my kids. Okay. What do you currently do? I work in sales. Okay. 
And um, so you basically tell yourself a story, you're overthinking that if I do this, then like it's one or the other. No, I mean like I kick ass in sales. Great. I can do that wonderfully. Like okay. it's just who I am. This right here, standing here and feeling like my story is important is not easy. Because you're a survivor too? Yes. So am I. <laughs> um, it starts with the willingness to try. Do you see this? That actually hearing what was in here and being brave enough, going five, four, three, two, one, it starts with that. Otherwise, you get trapped in hesitating. You get trapped in thinking, well, I'm so good in sales, I, I can't even possibly start that. But I got so much going on, I couldn't possibly find the time. Uh, who am I to do that? I don't even know, but I'd have stage fright. Right? Yes. Yep. So the thing that I want you to understand, what is one thing? Let's leverage the progress principle. Do you guys know the progress principle? This is fantastic research from the Harvard Business School that just came out, where there was a really fastidious professor that studied thousands and thousands and thousands of people in their daily work. She made them keep journals, and then she crunched all the data on the journal to figure out what makes somebody have a great day at work. What makes somebody come home and feel like they've gotten a lot done? What makes them feel productive? It was really simple, super simple. Did they make progress on one thing that mattered to them? today. That's it. So this is your one thing that matters to you. Mm -hmm. And so what I want you to do leaving here, and for all of you that fall into this category, hesitating, I did this with the event thing, the event side of my business that I want to do, been doing this for years, overthinking this thing, coming up with reasons, overthinking, overthinking. If this is you, I want you to leverage the progress principle. I want you every morning to write down one thing that, matter, like, that, that you can do, just one thing today. Forward is forward. I don't care how small it is. And then five, four, three, two, one, find five minutes to just inch that ball down the field. Because what happens is when you start to see yourself taking action on something that's important to you, like giving a voice to survivors of sexual abuse, whether it's just researching, or taking a little online course, or just buying a book, or just having a conversation, or just watching a video. If you do that every single day, what happens is you start to see yourself becoming the kind of person that's doing it. This is the secret to everything. Everything. I cannot stress this enough, and I cannot thank you enough for your bravery. Thank you. Of course. Oh, yeah, I better take this. Okay. There we go. Good job. Okay, here's another one. Hiding. Hiding. Hiding is triggered by fear. Hiding is triggered by fear. If you're hiding, you know if you're hiding because you avoid people. Right? A lot of people in uh, direct selling do this. Right? You know who you want to call, but we're not going to call them. Nope. Or you're in a meeting and you're silent. Or you see somebody you want to meet and you're silent. You're being a chicken. I was a big chicken about money for a while. I hid a lot in this category. Procrastinating. All right, who's next? Who sees himself? Art Julie? All right, uh, hold on. You're, uh, wait, Julie, come up, but you're in the pink hair. You're next, okay? Come on, Julie. Get up here. Give her a round of applause. She's doing the work for all of us. Wow. Okay. She's not hiding anymore. Okay. Yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, here, you, will you hold this? I have Thank a crush you. on you right now. You do? Cool. Yes. <laughs> um, so what is your next chapter? So I want to open up a national chain of nutrition companies, like a nutrition... <laughs> See? You can feel these things and you can keep moving. Okay? See? You, and she's doing the work for, you, for all of us. This is what it looks like to try. The feelings are normal. Letting them stop you, that's a choice. You guys want to hear my heart? <laughs> um, we can so see. Your radiance. So I'm a nutritionist and okay. I have a small office and I've been hiding. <laughs> I've okay. been helping people, but I want to take it larger, like a big Jenny Craig type of thing, but um, more natural, like helping people figure out their issues and support and accountability. Do you see hiding as a choice? <sighs> Do you see that hiding is a choice? 
Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what are you afraid of? Why are you hiding? I'm scared. I'm scared. Um, what are you scared of? I guess I'm scared of failure. Yeah. Okay. I'm scared of failure. And I'm, I'm afraid my life is going to change and I'll be so busy that I won't be able to go on vacation or hang out with my kids or... Yeah. Who can relate to that? Yeah. You know what's so interesting about that is that when you're afraid of failure and you don't take action, you kind of feel like a failure, don't you? Because mm -hmm. your dream haunts you a little bit. Yeah. So the thing that you're most afraid of, you've already got. Because you're, you're, really, you're really struggling underneath this big dream that you have. So in terms of hiding, so if you're somebody that hides, the key is, is literally, literally baby steps. The other thing that I'm going to tell you about the hiding self-doubt trap is that you're always going to be terrified. It's always going to feel like a big deal. And so expect it to. Okay? Expect it to. So the other thing I want you to do is because the other thing that people do that hide is, do you hear how big it is? Did you hear? National chain. Now that is the dream. But what could the next chapter be that's not so scary? Local. So let's start with, I want you leaving here and the next chapter of your life is actually launching the first prototype. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now what is something that you can do tomorrow that would force you out of your shell and to not hide, to inch forward? One action toward a local. Find a location or research, do some sort of research on a building or how that would, I don't know. Yes, yeah. this is exactly right. You don't know. I don't know. You're building competency. You don't know. How do you figure it out? You push yourself to try. And it doesn't matter what you try. You've got to look at buildings. You've got to look at other concepts. Mm -hmm. You've got to read a book on the business. You've got to talk to people in the business. This is what's so exciting about the next chapter. You're going to figure it out. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Give her a round of applause. Oh my God. I love okay. you. All right. You're welcome. All right, let me give you the other one. And then we'll bring you up. We'll bring you up. Uh, you can come up while I explain this. Okay, so the next one. Hypercritical. So this is when you lawyer things to death. This is when you argue against yourself. And this is usually triggered by past failures. So if you're somebody that got burnt in a relationship and you're busy arguing, I'm not doing online dating. I'm never dating again. If you got burnt in business and you are worried about starting again, um, you argue against yourself. So there are things that are opportunities and yet you're the one that's so critical. And if this isn't you, it might be somebody in your life where you see the greatness in them and they're like, yeah, I don't know. And, and you always focus on the reasons why you can't. Like you can't even see the possibility. You fixate on what could go wrong. Your stress has an edge to it. So hiding is quiet and avoiding. Hesitating is very busy. This has an edge. Okay, come on up. Here you are. Give her a round of applause. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on over here. Let's go in the middle so everybody can see you. Okay. So what is it that you would like to change? What's your next chapter? My next chapter is actually moving forward. I've taken a huge leap and I've left my full-time job without um, really a, any kind of a financial plan in place. Like my family does not have health insurance right now. Um, and I'm in direct sales and also building a business that I'm not exactly sure where it's going right now, but it has been in the making for 20 years. Like literally, I took my profession that took me off to the side. Well, let me ask you, what is it that is, what are you doing to get in your own way? Where is the trap I'm, of self-doubt, whether it's hiding, hesitating, being hypercritical? It's hesitating and hypercritical. Okay. Um, and I'm staying too busy to focus on continuing to make that So happen. what is the one thing that you need to be doing? So for those of you that are arguing against yourself, you're hypercritical, you're negative, I guarantee you, you know the thing that you need to be doing. It might be cold calls. Mm -hmm. It might be getting out there more and talking about your business. This mm -hmm. one we see a lot in people trying to build a direct selling mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. That you argue against yourself instead of getting into action. So let's tell one on yourself, what is the one thing that you need to be doing that you constantly avoid or talk yourself out of? 
I'm not getting out there and, and recruiting and building my team because I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid that I haven't provided enough for my family and the people that I already have. And so I just tell myself I, I really don't deserve to have more because I'm not taking care of what I currently have. That must be paralyzing. Yeah. Okay, so you've got two choices. Two choices, and you're gonna make a decision right now. You're either gonna go get a job so that you don't have that excuse anymore. That's option A. Or you're going to, every time you catch your, you're gonna make a little plan in the morning of the things you need to do and you know exactly what they are. And when you catch yourself shrinking, hiding, complaining, you're gonna go five, four, three, two, one. Because in five seconds flat, self-doubt, procrastination can derail you or you can step in and push yourself forward. Door number A, find a job, and therefore we remove the excuse. Or door number B, give yourself a timeline. You got two months to get this done. And every day you are going to push yourself. What's your choice? Five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Every day, make a choice, move forward. Great, I want you to do this for two months. If after two months you have not made this happen, you need to get a job so that you are providing the insurance for your family, but I want to give you a two month runway to absolutely crush it. You got it? Got it. Good, okay. Thank you. Excellent. All right, final one. The final one is helplessness. And I realize I want, I, I need to have a, a man come up here. Um, triggered by insecurity or low self-worth. You're, uh, what's that? You're ready? He's ready. He's hopeless, so get up here, okay. He's hungry, oh, he's hungry, okay. So helplessness, by the way, if you actively play the big victim, if you know the solution, if you know the solution, if you say nothing ever goes my way, if you've got all the excuses in the book, this is this trap. These are all actions, by the way. Hey, he's hungry. Okay. How are you? Good. I'm great, actually. This is pretty awesome right now. Awesome. Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. I just finished listening to the book. Awesome. You're the one. Yes, I am the one. Um, two weeks. So, what is it that you want to change? What are you working on? What's the next chapter? It starts the, today. The next chapter of my life right now is to create an altitude of vision to help people heal their spirits while building their body. Wow. Yes. So, does that mean, I don't mean to be rude, but is that like personal training? No. What does it mean? Okay, tell it's, me. It's a, it's a personal experience. Personal experience, okay. Yes, I, I personally lost 55 pounds six years ago. Outstanding. And now I'm helping others do the same. Okay. So I wanna, I, I ha, I'm part of a business, I'm part of a partnership, and I wanna take that to a more deeper level. Cause cool, I like, okay, so now let me quantify shoot. this. So here's another mistake that we all make. So I get the vision, cause you can feel as he's talking the passion, right? But I don't hear any specifics. Got it. So if you find yourself in the dreaming space and you can't get anything from this level to the list level, like from here to here, the problem is we're not talking specifics. Yes. So either you're not talking like, I make 100 grand right now in my business and I wanna to get to seven figures, or I make $17 and I wanna to get to 1700 this month. So if you're in that space, if people don't quite get what you're talking about or you don't know what to do next, you're not specific enough. Got it? So specifically, where is your business now and what does it look like in the next chapter specifically? Is it a money bridge? Is it a, what is it? I, it's, it's a mental branch to me. I just feel like right now I'm, I'm at the beginning stage. It's funny that I'm here right now because Yesterday, I was with my lady who was at the house, and I created a plan already. Great. I wrote everything down on a piece of paper, then, then I put it to the side. I okay. started watching Netflix. Uh, oh, of course, right? <laughs> watching Netflix. Okay. I did the plan. Because your business is on Netflix. Yeah, no, yeah. It's no, not. no, it's okay. not. It's not. It's but see, again, <laughs> that is driven by the habit of self-doubt. Right. You get confronted by the plan, so we choose to go over here. You hide. <laughs> right. You can now catch yourself. Five, four, three, two, one. Here's the thing. What does it look like if the business is launched? Is there a location? No. Okay, how many clients do you need to have paying you before this will be launched? How many clients paying you? At least six a week. Six clients a week paying you what? $50 an hour. $50 an hour. By when are we doing that? October 2nd. October 2nd, I would have given you 
a dollar if you said October 6th, because that's my birthday. But there we go. Okay, so just October 6th. There we go. You get a dollar. Okay. I still said it. <laughs> okay, so so um, six clients a week paying fifty dollars yes. an hour yes. by October 6th. Yes. Do you hear the difference, you guys? We have just defined what it means for him to relate to this as the business is launched. It is now out of up here, and now that we have defined the dream, it's become a plan, not a dream. Amen. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Go do it. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you.